Hi, folks. Welcome uh, to today's webinar. We'll just give another minute or so for more as more people join. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody to today's LF networking webinar. Uh, today's topic is Cloud Infrastructure Telco Task Force, or CNTT for short. Um, we're going to be giving an update, what's new, what's coming up. So um, before I introduce our panelists, um, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, all attendees are going to be muted throughout the duration of the webinar. However, uh, we do encourage Q&A throughout the session. Uh, there is a Q&A window. You're welcome to type in your question at any time. We do have a few minutes designated at the end of the presentation to go over those questions. Um, so feel free to, to post them in the window as they come up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and kick off. Uh, a welcome our today's presenters. We have Bob Monkman. He's Director of Open Source Strategist at Intel Corporation. And we've got Robbie Abdel. He's a Network Cloud Principal Architect and Senior Manager at Vodafone Group. And both of these gentlemen have been involved in ZNTT for quite some time. All right, so without further ado, um, I'm gonna kick things over to Bob. Thank you, Jill, I greatly appreciate it. So let's get started by re-examining the problem statement that CNTT has set out to achieve. Uh, you know, it's been several years since we began to see the deployments of virtualized network infrastructure that was originally envisioned at the launch of network function virtualization, you know, way back in the fall of 2012. And to be sure, great progress has been made, but the progress on network transformation has not been, I mean, frankly, it's not been as smooth nor as far along as we had originally hoped for by this time. And, you know, what we have seen is um, over 60 NFEI implementations and in most cases, uh, a fair amount of dependencies uh, in the VNFs on those underlying platforms, uh, effectively creating uh, virtual appliances. Um, you have to, the vendors have to go through a, onboarding and verification uh, compatibility, you know, um, process with each, with each uh, NFEI platform and VNF vendor combination. And we end up with a lot of siloed deployments. And, you know, these interoperability issues have led, frankly, to the onboarding um, time stretching uh, to weeks and months uh, and really higher op uh, operational complexity, higher costs, and uh, you know, less ability to get out more new functions for new services, which was the whole point of service agility, right? And so what we aim to achieve in CNT uh, through a highly collaborative and a very focused effort is to realize a more focused and finite set of common cloud inf infrastructure specifications and configurations, greatly expanded verification protocols, that result, the, the combination of which will result in a lot, a lot clear expectations and verification uh, and conformance of the combination of the network functions on the cloud infrastructure platform. And, you know, obviously what we hope to achieve then is uh, greater agility and in, in deploying and onboarding new network functions, reduced complexity in, in the operation and the cost of uh, executing those new network functions, uh, better consistent operating model, scalability, easier uh, route to automation, and better, better expectations of uh, you know what the verifications and conformance is uh, is defined as, and how it's achieved. You can pre-verify, and in the end, we get to you know quicker onboarding and more network functions deployed in a given period of time. Next slide, Brand. So just from a semantic standpoint, what, it, what is the Cloud Infrastructure Telco Task Force all about? So again, 
primarily we're looking to reduce the number of cloud infrastructure configurations on which you know the vnfs and the cnfs are deployed across the operators so that's you know a, that's sort of one of the key efforts here right is to really define uh, you know different you know config configurations for that are very well defined and the way that vnfs and cnfs should be expected to be onboarded are, are very clear and very well defined uh, you know it's really focused on the telco communications infrastructure network operators right um, and they started this you know back in early 2019 and got together and announced the initiative um, at ONS North America in San Jose in April but then quickly opened it up after some level setting and some some uh, agreement on the fundamental goals and the ways of working they started bringing all the, the vendors from the supply chain on board to participate and it's grown as you'll see in a coming slide it's grown to you know nearly 40 kind of participants and we are meeting weekly uh, in a number of work, work streams Robbie's going to go over the details of all the different work streams the different specifications we're creating etc but the the goal here is really it, it's a very focused collaborative task force the entire supply chain working in collaboration with GSMA GSMA is going to ultimately hold and and uh, and um, archive the artifacts the specifications a lot of the implementation of testing protocols and reference infrastructures to to help flesh out those testing protocols are going to be done in the uh, OPNFE uh, under the uh, Linux Foundation networking umbrella. So very close alignment between all these various ind industry bodies, the stakeholders uh, in the supply chain who are going to work together to uh, improve the situation and accelerate network transformation. That's, that's what we're all about here. Next slide, please. So, you know, at the outset, we, we, when, we, when we got fairly, fairly well into the process here, we spent some time talking to the decision makers, some of the executives at uh, both operators and suppliers to the operators in this in this community effort and we wanted to ensure that we had a, a really solid understanding of what the business value was to all involved and how we could convey that message right and and this is really key and so some of the highlights of that is we are submitting that cntt will effectively dramatically reduce the vnf and cnf onboarding time from weeks to months down to hours and days. That is a, uh, a very crisp goal of this initiative that we intend to achieve uh, in an iterative process. We're going to ensure that it is possible to deploy multiple network functions from different vendors without having to create unique uh, cloud infrastructure platforms for each one of those and effectively getting rid of the virtual appliance you know uh, effective situation that we have today and we're going to foster a, a a very well understood and very well communicated conformance and badging program that will be executed in in uh, under the linux foundation in the ovp program that you uh, may be familiar with from before but it's being expanded so that the you know all of the infrastructure vendors and the network function vendors have a very um clear and consistent path to greater assurance in deploying these things together and ultimately what that's going to result in we believe is far lower costs spent on and time on onboarding and testing the uh, the these vnfs and, and cnfs on the cloud infrastructure platform lower operational complexity lower expenses and faster time to volume and revenue which is what it's all about right so we think it's going to greatly expand the whole 5G ecosystem, encouraging new innovation, new players to enter the marketplace. Um, we think it's going to, you know, if we can do this faster, uh, we can realize that vision of service agility, new, you know, new network functions and new services can be deployed in a given year. That's shorter time to volume and greater revenue for everybody involved, right? So, and, Again, if we do our job right, 
and we've got very clear, very well-defined verification protocols that can be you know, done, pre, pre-validated in advance, then there's fewer surprises when they get into the lab at the operator's uh, site. So it lowers uncertainty, it lowers the, uh, the pain and suffering of getting these things validated and deployed. Ultimately, what CNTT will do is to dramatically improve the efficiency and the predictability of onboarding and deploying you know, the, the new network functions and accelerating network transformation in the process and lowering the total cost of ownership. That's, that's what it's all about. Next slide, please. So here's just a quick view of, you know, I mentioned that, you know, we've got nearly, you know, roughly in the order of 40 uh, participants um, now uh, in this initiative and growing. And so it's a really good cross section of network operators, ISVs, labs, silicon players, uh, telecom equipment manufacturers, um, operating system vendors, and you know management and orchestration vendors, et cetera. Right. So we've really got a good good cross section uh, of companies here, and participation from those companies uh, is growing. We, as I as I mentioned earlier, we have weekly meetings uh, in numerous work streams and focus groups. Robbie's going to go over the details of that, but uh, this, this initiative is getting a, a lot of good uh, participation, great collaboration, and uh, we're moving forward pretty rapidly. Next slide. So here's where I'm going to turn it over to Robbie, uh, and he's going to go into the details of how we're realizing this acceleration of network transformation, these new specifications, et cetera. And so, Robbie. Take it away. Uh, thank you, Bob, and thanks everybody for joining our webinar today. And to complement what Bob started in terms of the problem statement, uh, this is to a little bit go deeper into the details of how do we expect a CNTT to improve the VNF-CNF onboarding in a typical telco environment. The left-hand side of the slide that you can see in front of you is really showing the current VNF-CNF onboarding process within our network. As you can see, there are two areas and two parallel tracks that has to happen in order to any, for any service to be deployed in our infrastructure. So we do have the VNF vendor, the application vendor who delivering the service that we need to deploy in our infrastructure, but we also have the, and the VI vendor who are really providing the platform of which those application will have uh, to run off. And traditionally, more or less what's happening right now we have to go through different procurement process to board and procure those VNA vendors as well as the NVI vendors. But what happened really, when we tried to deploy those application into the chosen infrastructure, we realized there's a lot of design and implementation dependencies of the workload against the infrastructure. What that really means to help to successfully deploy any application in our chosen infrastructure, there is certain level of testing and verification that have to happen in-house before we really successfully been able to deploy the application in our network. And if we think about automation, how do you really make that possible? It becomes even more challenging to bring this automation while we ha you have this dependency between the workload and the underlying infrastructure. With the CNTT, we expect the CNTT to bring in the right-hand side of the diagram, as you can see, some level of standardization of which both PNF as well as an VI conform to. What that really mean, the VNF vendors, when, we, when they bring their application or the CNF vendor, when they write their container workloads, they write against a will, will specify the standard that will determine what capabilities the underlying infrastructure will provide to the application level. And similarly, when we go and onboard an NFVI solution or a cloud platform into our network, we make sure that the capabilities and the feature set the infrastructure is providing is the same of what the VNF or the workload is actually expecting. What that really means also that we could rely on industry-driven verification program such as LFN or VP to do the certification on our behalf. In essence, the VNF vendor or the CNF vendor will go and certify their application in the industry. At the same time, when we buy and in the VR solution, we make sure it's actually certified in the community and that will really reduce the risk that we will end up 
having to integrate and having challenges in integrating the VNF and the NFVI. Next. So this is more on to going into a little bit detail into the, the scope and how the CNTT specification is being really structured. So as, as we explained earlier, there is the VNF side of things, but there's also the infrastructure side of things. There's the workload that actually we're trying to deploy in our infrastructure, and that workload is expected to understand in details what kind of infrastructure capabilities or metrics it needs to have in order to allow it to understand what it has to do in order to deliver the level of KPI and performance we expect to, to get from that workload. And the reference model is exactly doing that. It specifies in details what kind of resources the infrastructure is exposing to the workload and what kind of feature set and metrics and performance numbers you expect to get from the underlying infrastructure. Additional to that, the reference model will contain some exceptions to allow the workload, whether it is a VNF or a CNF, to migrate and transition to be CNTT conformance. So we don't really expect the workload and the application to be CNTT conformance from day one. The expectation really is to work together and trying to understand what that transition plan uh, look like. And we're doing that in CNTT through introducing the concept of exceptions in our implement in our specifications that we have in CNTT. Of course, additional to that, there will be guidelines to the application vendors to assist them to understand how they expected to consume uh, their standard and build their application according to that. Now the reference model, as Bob mentioned, the expectation is really for it to, to migrate and move to GSMA. So GSMA will keep maintaining the specification uh, in the long run. Now, once we define the reference model and what the workload should expect from the underlying infrastructure, the question becomes, how do I deliver this infrastructure that has the right level of capabilities and feature set, which the workload is expecting to have. And we, this is why we do have two tracks in CNTT trying to come up with a cloud platform based on OpenStack technology, as well as Kubernetes and containers technology. Now for the OpenStack one, we do have the reference architecture based on OpenStack that will specify in details what kind of API, what kind of functionalities, what kind of feature sets the cloud platform has to have. And that also includes some level of hardware expectation that we expect to see in the underlying infrastructure to, to make sure that we guarantee any level of performance we set and define in the reference model. Now, once the reference architecture is really defined, then the question becomes, do we have a reference implementation using an open source components and elements that we can define to realize an implementation or an instance of that reference architecture that we can use as the basis of the certification conformance program the industry is trying to lead to. And this is when we talk about the reference conformance. A reference conformance is a set of test cases and test tools that allow any and the VI implementation to be certified against CNTT specification. And of course, the reference implementation in that case will be a reference that we can relate any certification activities of vendor implementation against that reference implementation. So that will be like the, the threshold of what we expect all vendor implementation confirming to CNTT to live by. And similarly in the Kubernetes and container world, we do have the same kind of setup. We do have a reference architecture that will determine in details what kind of components, plugins that we expect to see in the, in the, in the cloud platform that are targeting towards container, but also we define what kind of API and interfaces we expect to expose to the workload in that sense. And that will be complemented by having a reference implementation using an upstream open source uh, components to define and design and implementation for the containerization reference architecture. And finally, that will be complemented by the reference conformance, which is again, a list of uh, test cases and tools that will allow us to test any cloud platform container based against the reference implementation that we created in CNTT. And as you can see from this, the slide, both of those tracks will be complemented by the LFN verification program that will allow either the cloud platform 
all the workload to be badged and certified against the CNTT specifications. And across the horizon, across the different specification we have in CNTT, we do have the networking focus group, which is looking at what kind of feature set from networking perspective we would like to support in different specifications. And that's looking at the physical layer, but also trying to look at how those resources from networking perspective will be exposed and consumed by the workload. And finally, we have an edge uh, work stream that will look at specific requirements that are targeting more the edge use cases. Uh, for example, the open RAN is one of the use cases that we are trying to address and look at uh, to support in, in CNTT. Next slide. Now, this is really looking at it from architecture point of view. Of course, there's always a question around orchestration, automation, what are we doing around those topics? And this is really to clarify that when it comes to CNTT, these are the areas that uh, we consider on the, in the scope of CNTT. So if we start from the reference model, which is the blue, uh, blue shape we see in the screen, this is really defining the abstraction model that we set into, uh, into CNTT that, will expect, that we expect the workload to design against. And this is basically all the capabilities and resources we expose to the workload. The workload, in this case, can be either a VNF-based, VM-based, or also it can be a containerized base. But the reference model is a common between both VNF's world and the CNF world. Now, moving, up, moving down the stack, we do have the cloud infrastructure, the software layer, and this is really in the, in the open stack one, is the RA one. And that, as I explained earlier, defining how the cloud infrastructure from software perspective will be designed and architected to, uh, to fulfill the expectation we set in the reference model. And similarly for the container platform, the RA2, the Wextreme RA2 that we have in CNTT will set how the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster will be designed and architected to deliver the capabilities and feature set that we expose to the, the CNF from the reference model. And moving down the stack to the, to the cloud infrastructure, the physical layer, we expect this layer to span across different uh, specifications. So it will address and touch the reference model. It will also touch the RA1 and also RA2 in that sense. And finally, we do have the CAS manager, which is really the life cycle management of the cloud platform container based, and we expect the RI2 to make a choice of what class manager, what CAS manager we will uh, will be using, but that not going to be anything we standardize in CNTT. So although in CNTT we are going to select and determine what CAS manager we are going to use for the reference implementation two, which is the container based, we're not really standardizing how that should look like and what's the behavior of that cast manager need to be. And we expect the vendor themselves will bring their own cast manager for their own cloud platform. But we are using that cast manager for RI2 as the basis of any conformance testing we have to do against the uh, cloud platform. And the same story apply in the OpenStack world. For RA1, we expect to choose and select a cloud infrastructure manager that we'll be using as the basis for the reference implementation. But again, we expect the vendors who are delivering OpenStack cloud platform to bring in their own lifecycle manager that will come with their own product. And we're not really standardizing how that should look like and what's the behavior of that, uh, that cloud infrastructure manager uh, should be. And finally, when it comes to the conformance, as you can see from the screen, we do have two system under test in this scenario. We do have the cloud infrastructure itself is really the under test that we would like to perform this thing against. And that's the RC1 that is targeting against OpenStack. And that would be complemented by the LFN OVP phase one badging program. But also we do have the system under test, which will be the cluster itself for the container paste. And we expect the OVP phase two to be the program delivering the badging for those kind of platform. Additional to that, those conformance program we design and develop in CNTT will also touch some aspect from the workload. So we expect the RC1, which is OpenStack based, also to have some test cases to test 
how the workload is really consuming the infrastructure in the way that is conformant to your entity specification. Similarly, when it comes to the CNF, we expect to have some kind of testing that will guarantee that the CNF, when it is, when it is deployed against the infrastructure, it will conform the CNTT uh, specifications. Next slide. Uh, so this is kind of trying to clarify how CNTT is really related to the HCNV uh, initiative. So if we think about HCNV, and as you can see, HCNV is mainly focusing into the management and orchestration. There's various different points of which HCNV is really specifying and focusing on. And what we're really doing in CNTT, we're trying to add this, the, the point of which HCNV are not mainly targeting. So the things that around the infrastructure and how the infrastructure are exposed to the workload, this is something that the HCNV are not really addressing at the moment. And this is what the scope of CNTT is, is trying to fill the gaps to avoid having a situation where you do have multiple variants on the infrastructure that's, that's trying to be conformant to its CNV, but because its CNV is not really standardizing in those, so we risk the option of having multiple of these variants exist in any given uh, deployments. And this is where CNTT is trying to step up and trying to define the standard for those components that's not being standardized uh, by its CNV. Uh, next. And this is trying to also uh, clarify the relationship that we see between what CNTT are doing and what OpenV and OVP are doing. Of course, when it comes to CNTT, it's all about requirements. What do we expect the infrastructure to contain? What, what kind of interfaces and APIs we need to see from the, in, from the underlying infrastructure? And this is where the CNTT and the various specification we, we design and develop will feed in many requirements that will go into OpenV. Specifically, if we look at the reference implementation, when we really need to have that kind of realization of the infrastructure based on open source components, we specify in details in the RI, what kind of infrastructure requirements we expect to see that we expect any installer to kind of deliver. And this is where we feed those requirements into the OpenV and that will determine what kind of hardware we expect the community labs in OpenAV to contain. Addition to that, when it comes to things like Airship, we really set requirements into Airship to specify what is the state expected from the underlying infrastructure that we would like Airship to install for us that we can use as the basis for the certification activity. Addition to that, when we come up with a, with a reference implementation, we expect the reference implementation to have a kind of cookbook that will determine to the readers of the, our specification what kind of instruction in details the, any audience of that specification will have to go through in order to allow it to have an instantiation of that reference implementation in their own lab. And that really will help and assist workload vendors such as Vienna vendor or Sienna vendor to assist them to, do, to deploy the reference implementation in their own lab and allow them to test their own workload on top of the CNTT conformant reference implementation. And finally, as OpenAV provide a lot of testing, tooling, and projects that will be uh, uh, important to test the capabilities of the underlying infrastructure, whether it is a functionality testing or performance testing or benchmarking, the expectation is really for CNTT to provide OpenAV with test cases to determine to OpenAV what kind of metrics we would like to test against and what kind of functionalities we'd like to see those OpenAV projects are actually testing. And the result of those testing that OpenAV is doing will be feeding into uh, things like Dovetail in Open in uh, LFN OVP program that will allow the, the, the governance in the CVC to review the results submitted by the vendors and go through approval process. And that will allow NFVI as well as Vienna vendor to go through the certification program and get their platform as well as their workload certified against uh, CNTT. Uh, next. Of course, uh, beside OpenAV and OVP, there are many uh, industry bodies that uh, we actively collaborate with. And uh, just to name a few here, we have the LF Edge, and we have a close collaboration trying to uh, look at the requirements they have in the Acreno project and feeding those requirements 
into our edge work stream. Additional to that, GSMA has their own edge initiatives that we're trying to keep close alignment to, as well as ONAB when they look at the VNF requirements specifically and what kind of orchestration capabilities that we expect to see because of things that we define in CNTT. So of course, although we expect the, the impact of what we do in CNTT to ONAB to be minimum, we're trying to coordinate on things like security and things like resource provisioning and making sure that the, 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 the definition we have in CNTT are kind of orchestrated from the ONAP perspective. And of course, OpenStack, we're trying to identify if there are any gaps we, we, we see in the industry when we develop our standard in CNTT, we're trying to be more proactive and interact more closely with, with the OpenStack to proactively address those uh, challenges that we see in the industry. And again, when it comes to things like Open Network Foundation, and we are trying to collaborate in the networking focus group and come up with a consistent networking model that we deploy for CNTT. Tungsten Fabric is another example of the projects that we are planning to, uh, to support in our reference implementation for OpenStack. And hence the collaboration between us and Tungsten Fabric is to make sure that we do have this support in the reference implementation. Additional to that, Open Daylight, one of the projects that we're trying to bring more SDN capabilities into our specification. And we see that the collaboration is important to make sure we are kept aligned between the initiatives we do in both sides. And again, and finally, the plug tests here, which is done by ETCNV. Uh, Bob is gonna talk a little bit more about in later slide, but we're trying to keep engaged in the community and participate in the event uh, hosted by ETCNV for the testing and verification purposes. And in the next slide, I'm going to uh, talk more about uh, CNCF and uh, the TIB in particular uh, and the collaboration we're doing with them. So for the CNCF, uh, as you can imagine, we do have a strong collaboration with the CNCF uh, TILCO user group, TUG, and uh, the main collaboration we have is to make sure that as uh, the TUG group defines the cloud native principles, we need to make sure that those principles and those specifications set in TUG are actually aligned with what we specify in our container-based uh, reference architecture. Addition to that, the CNCF has uh, really uh, great programs around the CNF conformance test and uh, the close collaboration we have with the, with the team there to make sure that the test cases of interest to CNTT actually being implemented in the CNF conformance test. So this way we avoid having to duplicate the effort and we're trying to leverage as much as we can what is happening in the industry. And finally, the CNF testbed, and, and because also they have the labs and they have the reference, their own reference implementation, we're trying to uh, bring and influence uh, the reference implementation in those projects to be more aligned with CNTT, but also we're trying to get some learning back into the CNTT from the experience that the CNF testbed is really having within the CNCF community. And finally, for the TIB, with there are different collaboration with different projects that are going with the TIB, specifically around the open core and networking project. Uh, open core networking project are using the CNTT RA2 as the de facto for their own cloud architecture for the OCN uh, workload that we're trying to deploy uh, in terms of container, containerization uh, workload for the 5G core and uh, the labs and the reference implementation they are creating they are aligning those specification of the, their own reference implementation with the CNTT. And this is again an opportunity to get the learning back from the TIB and feed those requirements back into CNTT. And similarly with the open RAN project that's happening in, within the TIB, we are trying to be collaborating with the, with the, with the project in, in TIB, the open RAN, trying to get the requirement feeding into uh, the CNTT uh, edge work stream so we make sure our specifications, whether it is RM or RA2, are actually aligned with the requirement they have. And we make sure we do have the right feature set and the right capabilities to make sure that the, any open RAN workload is actually can run in CNTT conformant uh, implementations. Next slide. I'm just quickly going to the roadmap. Uh, this is the roadmap that we, we do have in CNTT. As you can see, we did release uh, Baldi uh, two weeks ago, 
uh, which is really based in OpenStack mainly uh, release at the moment. And that is that comes with uh, a complete uh, reference conformance uh, suite that comes with this tooling and test cases that will allow an, uh, an infrastructure to be certified against CNTT. Moving into BARAQ, we expect to have the OVP program in LFN reflecting a CNTT requirements. So hopefully after a BARAQ release in September, and the VI vendor can go and certify their, their infrastructure against CNTT specification. Of course, uh, there's something called bundle in CNTT, which really determines what kind of specification relates to each other. So bundle three, the one we released in Baldi, will have all the, all the specifications and documentation that will be related to each other. Moving to BARAQ, we expect to start seeing a new feature set added to the reference model, such as hardware acceleration. But we also expect to have complete story for bundle three that will take us through all the life cycle from the implementation of the workload all the way to the conformance of those, uh, those workloads. Uh, next slide. Uh, and by this, I, I hand over back to, to Bob. Thanks, Ravi. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, where, where we're going with some, you know, some testing and some verification. Right now, we're planning to, in the, in, over the course of the next few weeks in June, we're going to do some, some what we call field trials. And you could consider these to be uh, alpha testing, let's say, for the reference conformance, uh, specifically reference conformance one with the OpenStack track. Uh, the, the reference conformance two will follow on a little bit later. Uh, so the idea here is to, you know, we're, we want to validate the efficacy and the adoptability of the specification. You know, can we do we, are our specifications tight enough, clearly defined enough, and are the testing protocols, the verification programs built upon what, you know, we were building upon, by the way, what we had in OPNFE in the past, but there's a lot more required now. So we wanna make sure that we've got the right, um, the right specification details, um, the right gaps filled and the right testing protocols, right? And we expect this to be a, a, an iterative process. So the first, set of field trials are going to be um, in starting next week and running through June. And we have uh, some trials consisting of with uh, three telcos and two NFEI suppliers. And we're going to have a virtual conference uh, in the third week of June. We'll talk about that on one of the on the next slide or so on some links to some of these events. There's a virtual conference that we will have and we'll publish you know, some findings from that. And we expect to derive some learnings, go back to, to the process, the work streams and improve the testing, fill any gaps that we have and just go through that, you know, sort of alpha beta production, you know, sort of rollout and versioning of the reference conformance. So we'll start here with this first one coming up uh, in the next month. So we're pretty excited about that. We're also having some conversations with some of the participants in the Etsy plug test, which is um, later on in June as well. Uh, there's, there's, for example, there's a number of VNF vendors that are participating in that, in that plug test. And so we hope to uh, get some testing done either in this field trial or in a separate session with some of the VNF vendors uh, on some of the participant the NFVI suppliers or reference implementations that we've done here. And again, our, our goal is to uh, iterate on and you know, continuously improve the quality of our specifications and the effectiveness of our conformance test protocols. Next slide, please. So how do you get involved? How do you contribute? Uh, so first of all, I wanna make it pretty clear that there's really not a formal membership to the, this task force. This is a participant organization. There are some rules, there are some um, IP, you know, considerations that are always present and so forth and so on, but there's no, you know, you don't join or, or sign up or uh, necessarily you come and you participate and you contribute and you learn, right? And so here on this slide, you're seeing uh, where a lot of the um, the specifications for CNTT are found on the GitHub uh, 
location for, for CNTT. So the reference model, there's, there's some general ones here. There's documentation up in the right-hand corner. There's uh, um, you know, other specifications listed here. And very specifically for the reference model, the reference architecture, the reference implementation, and the reference conformance, you're seeing here the links to those very specific. So you can go there, find the documentation, read the chapters, and, and see uh, what we've got so far. And again, these are all evolving and versioning over time, as Robbie pointed out in the roadmap. So you are encouraged to come in, join, find out. You'll find out uh, about meetings and meeting times on the CNTT wiki, right? And that'll, that'll, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll allow you to find out where, when in the meeting for the RA1 um, work stream or the RA2 work stream and join in that meeting and hear what's going on and contribute, right? So we've got really good participation, but we, we really need and want and welcome more eyes, more participants helping us move this effort forward. Let's go to the next slide. And here we're going to see um, a lot of new um, collateral artifacts that we've created for the Baldy release. So we've got an updated white paper that we just posted here. Um, go check that out. We've got a blog post about the details of the Baldy release uh, here as well. Uh, I might want to make particular mention here of the CNTT wiki on Linux under Linux Foundation networking, right? So this is where you're going to find a lot of meeting minutes and a lot of other information, including the onboarding guide. That's a really important one. If you are interested in actually participating in CNTT and you want to understand what are the steps, go to the onboarding guide and it will walk you through uh, four to five steps that you will need to take to participate and uh, it's very very helpful very clear sign up for the mailing list there's various mailing lists ones that you may be interested in and uh, and, and one point that I want to really make here is this is not just about uh, learning and understanding what we're doing but we're welcoming and welcoming and actively looking for participants if you have expertise or experience or a passion for solving some of the problems that we're talking about, then we would like you to come in and join this effort and, uh, and help us realize it and help us make it happen. And again, on the previous slide, I mentioned that some of the testing results will be um, published at the next developer and testing forum. So this is a virtual Linux Foundation networking forum happening the week of June 22nd. There's going to be several tracks, and if you, some of you may be familiar. We have OPNFE tracks and ONAP tracks and, uh, and other tracks uh, from LFN projects. Uh, but CNTT also has a track, and, and there's some joint sessions. And so we can't, we don't have the, the pleasure of meeting face-to-face -face and uh, talking over coffee breaks and uh, in networking events, but we can still meet. Um, we can still have sidebar chat rooms. Uh, there are joint sessions, there are plenary sessions, so lots of good information. So please go to this link, uh, register the event, and during that uh, you know, several day event, you'll get lots of information on the latest and greatest on what's happening with uh, CNTT as well as other um, LFN projects. So with that, I think we're going to go into Q&A, Jill. All right, great. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, really great presentation. Um, and thanks to those who have submitted questions. We have answered some of them uh, via typed response, uh, but we do have a few minutes left to go through um, some questions live here. Um, so I think one of our first questions to, uh, to respond to is, uh, are there plans for VNF vendors to participate in the field trial? And if so, how does someone get involved? Yeah, so I could take that one. I, I, I briefly touched on that. So we're still working on that, but there, there's absolutely, I mean, we want VNF vendors, right? And so we've started with some NFEI and, and cloud infrastructure vendors for uh, testing against RA1. Uh, but, and we want some VNF vendors uh, as well. And so we have been actually reaching out to some VNF vendors. Uh, uh, on the side, uh, people that we know are participating, as I said, in the Etsy plug test, but we haven't, you know, we haven't gotten to everybody yet. Um, and so we're a little bit behind on that, but 
absolutely. We, if you are from a VNF company and you would like to set up some, some testing on some of the uh, representative participating cloud infrastructure platforms, uh, by all means, uh, get a hold of us uh, on the wiki, join one of the meetings, and uh, we'll, we would love to hear from you. Great, thank you. Um, so here's a question for Robbie. Um, how are we planning to achieve a cloud and a VI agnostic infrastructure? As some vendors might be using OpenStack-based deployments to spawn VM containers, some could be using Kubernetes, Docker, some from cloud providers like AWS, GCP, Azure, et cetera. Are we planning uh, to make a common generic API for LCM and orchestration, et cetera? Uh Good question. So the LCM and the orchestration piece is not in the scope of, uh, of CNTT. A project like uh, ONAB have a multi-cloud uh, project that will try to standardize the, the way you interact with the different cloud. But from CNTT perspective, if we look at the RA1, which is the open stack based, it is infrastructure as a service layer. Now, if we, when we look about look at containers workload, the RA2, which is uh, the Kubernetes cluster, will be not dependent on any infrastructure as a service layer. So that uh, RA2 architecture can be deployed either in bare metal, in OpenStack, in cloud, in public, wherever the, the, the infrastructure as a service layer has been chosen to be. So there's less dependency, there's no dependency between the Kubernetes cluster specification we create in CNTT and the underlying uh, physical infrastructure uh, for that matter. Great, thank you. Um, there's another question for you, Robbie. As per my understanding, CNTT is leveraging OPNFE for RC1, but except OPNFE, is there anything CNT, are there any CNTT specific workloads available? Uh, there is no such a thing as CNTT specific workload. So of course, CNTT specification can apply to any kind of workload that would like to be designed conformant to CNTT specification. So for example, if we define a certain storage APIs that will be supported by the infrastructure, which is conformant to CNTT, the expectation of any workload that would like to, to run against the CNTT conformant infrastructure will have to be designed and built to leverage that existing interface. Now, for CNTT, any workload that's into working focus will be CNTT conformance if it was designed to follow the CNTT specification. Okay, great. Um, we've got another question. Um, this one is, is for anyone. And I do want to note that we also have Heather Kirksey on the line. Um, with She's with the Linux Foundation. She's heavily involved in CNTT and might be able to answer some of these questions as well. Um, so is there any volunteer work required uh, for CNTT OpenFE like funk test yardstick test cases? And if so, what is the procedure uh, to contribute to OpenFE related tests? Oh, great. So the yeah. simple answer is yes, please, more now. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I saw that this was a question from an anonymous attendee. Um, but yeah, so participating in OPNFE is like the rest of the LFM projects. There is a, an open repo. There are <coughs> regular email discussions and IRC discussions uh, with respect to Funk Test. Um, if you're interested in getting involved, it might be useful to introduce you uh, to some of the folks in OPNFV who work on funk test and testing in general. So some folks like Al Morton, our TSC chair, and Cedric Olivier, who is the PTL for funk test. Bob, do you have right. anything? Yeah, in, in, addition, uh, in addition, yes. Uh, so there are... Uh, on the wiki, the uh, LF networking wiki for CNTT, we had a link on the, the previous slide before the Q&A and you'll get that uh, copies published. Uh, you will, there, there, you'll find um, the, uh, the work streams and minutes of the, the RC, um, the reference conformance uh, uh, work stream, right? And so you can, and, and on the CNTT, um, wiki you'll find the meeting times uh, for all of the work streams so if you join the rc work stream meetings that would be helpful as well great um, just a few more questions here um this one is for robbie do we see hcps like azure gcp at aws aligning with cntt in the future if they're not conforming to cntt then telcos may not choose hcps 
so yeah, the idea is for even public cloud, uh, specifically for the offering towards network uh, and the VA network function virtualization is uh, to have also alignment with CNTT. Certainly uh, when the RA2 and the Kubernetes uh, specifications uh, comes out for, of CNTT, we will be working closely uh, with public cloud vendors and providers to make sure that uh, any workload that's written against CNTT will still run in the same way against public cloud as, as if it runs in on-premises. So it, the, answer, the short answer is yes, that's the plan. Wonderful. Um, how has OPNFE changed since it's been collaborating with CNTT? I could, I could take a crack at that one. So, you know, it's really important to note that, I mean, I think many people are, you know, are probably aware that, that OPNFE's original, um, you know, one of the deliverables out of OPNFE was a, a particular reference implementation NFE stack, right? And we did two releases a year for four years or so. And then we paused on that last year. And so we're no longer producing reference implementation stacks. And that's one of the big points of the, you know, sort of the pivot and the shift, right? So we're, we're leveraging all the goodness uh, that we created, the tools, the testing, um, lab setups and so forth from OPNFE. And we actually uh, changed the mission statement uh, of OPNFE. So we're really, we're really aligned with the goals of CNTT and OPNFE, uh, if you want to call it OPNFE 2.0, right, is really focused on a, a new mission to, um, to effectively align with the, the task force goals and really improve really the reference implementations, right? And those reference implementations are not the same. They're not like releases uh, as was done in OPNFE 1.0. They're really meant to strengthen and fill gaps and, and, and uh, on the specifications and the test suites, right? To improve the test suites. So we want to implement against the specs and use that RI to create better and better RC uh, verification frameworks, right? And so the, the RC uh, uh, frameworks, the tests and, and the utilities and so forth, those are what OPNFE is going to be focused on um, in the near term here on delivering, right? And so that, and then there's also the OVP program that uh, branches off of that. Um, and so these are the big, big deliverables now, the big changes to OPNFE. So, uh, you know, OPNFE is changing and it's revitalized and we are welcoming members to come in and help us uh, accelerate network transformation with this new mission. Yeah, what, one of the really exciting things I think is seeing a renewed um, excitement between the developers and OPNFV uh, with a lot of direct feedback from from the operators, um, so that everyone you know feels very confident that the work that we're producing will actually attain these goals of you know accelerating network transformation and service agility and you know reduced opex so it's it's definitely been a pretty exciting several months in opnfe world excellent um so i looks like we just have one more question um it sounds like there's some overlap between cntt's charter and onap can someone elaborate on that I don't think so. No, I don't really see the overlap. I mean, you know, ONAP is really focused on the lifecycle management, the uh, service orchestration and all and lots of auxiliary functions uh, around that, uh, really on the automation. And that's completely out of scope. Um, it still is we our work is still is really focused on on improving that that NFEI cloud infrastructure platform interoperability with the network functions. Um, and, 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 uh, and the closest we get is our, of course, our interactions with the, the OpenStack uh, implementations out there, you know, the VIMS and the Kubernetes um, uh, interaction on, uh, with, the, with the RC2 and, and RI2s and so forth. So not to, I'll let Robbie you know, comment as well, but uh, it's, it's really separate domains. We're not going to get into the life cycle management or the automation area, but we're hoping that our work will make life easier for those tools to sit on top of and, uh, and do their particular functions. 
Yeah, certainly uh, CNTT is mono agnostic. So we don't really have any say on how the workload is being orchestrated, which is mainly what the ONAB is doing. Now, as we specify what cloud infrastructure looks like and what kind of feature set and resources exposed by the cloud to the workload, we see areas where, for example, if we look at the VNF requirement project in ONAB, where you ask the VNF to specify what kind of resources it needs from the underlying infrastructure. Those are the only areas that we see might be some uh, yes. impact, but impact also only in the information model, not in the life cycle management of the workload or the way that uh, the ONAB is actually uh, many, uh, interacting with the infrastructure to spawn new virtual machines or doing any management for the workload. It's only going to impact how the VNF descriptor potentially look like because it, now there's more information model reflecting the CNTD specification, but nothing beyond that. Good point, Robbie. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that wraps up today's webinar. Um, thank you to our our panelists, our participants, and all of the attendees. Uh, we've enjoyed having you with us today. Um, as a reminder, the slides uh, and an on-demand recording will be available tomorrow. Um, everyone who's a registered to attend will receive a link via email uh, to those both of those resources, and they'll also be posted on the LF Networking website. All right, we hope to see you all on a future webinar. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.